Yeah, I'm Aaron Perry. I'm an alderman in Waukesha, District 12. Uh, I'm also the Marketing and Public Relations Director here at VAC Regency at 280 Regency Court, a place where entrepreneurs can share ideas. It's also the home of the VAC Group, a real estate investment company investing in our area and others. It's also home to Malkin Solutions, an international and nationwide consulting group helping small and large businesses with their processes and training. I'm here with a gentleman I've known for quite a while, uh, Richie Burke with gogetit.com. I uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, we're gonna go over some actually great business ideas, uh, a lot of things you've implemented. And then as I always do, three fun questions that you don't know uh, at the very end, unless you're looking at my notes. But <laughs> I'm trying. I wish you had better than right. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Very much looking forward to this conversation today. But at first, I want to start with um, your start and how you how you started and then how you pivoted into ma making a sustainable business in our region. Yeah. So my start, I, I went to school in Marquette. I graduated in 2011. The summer before that, I had a door-to-door -door sales job selling discounted brewer tickets for this kind of company. I think it was kind of a pyramid scheme, but it, 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 <laughs> I, I learned a lot from it. So okay, um, I would get, I'd go to this office and we'd work on our pitch and then they'd send you out to just some random Wisconsin town and I'd knock on about 100 doors a day, businesses mostly, and go to strip mall, just keep going. It's and valuable experience. Yeah, I'm stopping by on behalf of the brewers, we're doing a throwing area, and um, that was really nerve wracking, especially the first time the concept of going in and selling something to a stranger while they're working. And Sure. Yeah. But it was a very good skill to learn how to sell, and I got good at it, and it was you know, a straight commission job, and did that the summer before my final year of school, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I graduated at that point in time and okay. had to, made the decision to start a business. So I kind of looked at my skill set um, and what was hot right now in Groupon and Living Social, the daily deal platforms were, um, yeah. they were booming then, which kind of looking back, sometimes those aren't the best businesses to, to get into, but um, started go get it as a Groupon Living Social type platform. Um, just by going door to door to a lot of local businesses in the Milwaukee and Madison areas, trying to get them to run promotions on my site. Kind of before I had one, I'd walk in with an iPad and walk people through. And you were one of those people, I believe. Uh, yes, I was. Willow Run Golf Club. Yep. And you gave us a, a shot. We uh, we did a promo. Yeah, for you guys we did. did so. I remember taking you out actually to a drivable par four. Yeah. During during one of our sales <laughs> meetings. I remember that. To see if we could knock it on the green. From about 300 yards. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if we did or not, but no, we didn't. <laughs> we, tr we tried. We put in we tried effort. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good sales. It was. Big golf shots. I enjoyed. I enjoyed coming down and doing to see you there. So I was going to a lot of businesses like that and uh, doing a lot of kind of guerrilla marketing to get that off the ground. And it, yeah. it took a while. But in that first year, we worked with um, over 100 clients and had 15,000 users but the company was in a saturated market. It wasn't yeah. solving that real of a problem and it, it wasn't, you know, wasn't making money at that point in time. But at the same time, that was the summer 2012, we started running some social media for some of our ideal clients, shooting videos. And I realized, you know, small businesses really were not good at marketing themselves. So we started doing those services in conjunction with the deal site and that got a good response. So I chose to officially pivot the business at the start of 2013 into a uh, marketing agency, even though I didn't really know what a marketing agency was at that point in time. <clears throat> we were just running social media and kind of caught that on the upswing. Um, and the pivot was a mess. I hired two people on at that point in time. One, um, she, did, she was bright. She was a you know, I had to let her go after six weeks. So I don't need to go into, okay. into what I did. And then the other guy I brought on, um, he was doing fine. And, and then we ended up signing on, you know, this one client 
which we were working with all these mom and pop shops at the time. We signed on this one client. Oh, great. You know, they're paying us a few grand a month. We're shooting commercials that are actually going to be on TV. Like, awesome. This is going to work. So yeah. we do that. And then the morning of our first commercial shoot, I, this was a Tuesday in March, and my phone starts vibrating at 4 a.m. or Wednesday morning, morning of our shoot. I pick it up. It's like, well, this is the Milwaukee County Jail. We accept this phone call. And the guy who was running the shoot was in with the DUI on a Tuesday night. And there's not a lot going on on Tuesday nights in Milwaukee in March, but he found a way to to do that. So I run <laughs> I run to jail and I get him out of his car, stuff with all the equipment in it, and we had to reschedule that shoot. And I actually remember you telling me this story. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably it's five or six stories. Ago. Yeah, probably yeah. some more detail, but that was the the short end of that. And <clears throat> those were the two people I kind of brought on when I pivoted. Um, Okay. And yeah, made some HR errors on top of kind of learning a new business and trying to get that off the ground. But we got a really good break out of New York that summer um, and started working with this agency that this guy named Alan Siegel started, who's given a TED talk and he drew the MBA logo and he built up Siegel and Gill, which is one of the largest agencies. He started a VT company out there. And that was a really good break in the summer of 2013, which has kind of snowballed into projects all over the country over the last several years and kind of helped us get off the ground. And since then, we've really evolved the business. We were working out of the, the Hudson Business Lounge when we started. And, sure. um, you know, we've got into new services. We've grown and recently moved into our third or fourth office space since then, down in San Francisco, built out a podcasting studio and, you know, now work with, still work with some small businesses, but also, you know, larger larger companies and some all over the country. Yeah, it's like, what's well, the cliff notes on okay. on the start and the path of how we've gotten there. I know, yeah, it's um, you've done a great job of <clears throat> of uh, navigating the business uh, area and sustaining your business. And like you said, pivoting, reinventing uh, is sometimes the terminology that I use. Um, but talk about the podcast and who you're working with, who, you, who you've had on, and what's next. Yeah, so the podcast, we started it in the fall of 2016, so coming up on a year. And it was always something I kind of <clears throat> wanted to do. There was one episode of The Go-Getters in 2012, which was released as a YouTube interview. And, you know, it just it's still, it's still there. Um, but I put it on the back burner for a while. And then podcasts have been on the rise. So started that. And similar to this, I started business. Um, I was meeting all these interesting people in Milwaukee. There were all these topics going on in Milwaukee that weren't really yeah. getting covered and talked about. And a lot of these stories that were just kind of flying under the radar. And Very I thought, yeah, hey, this could make a really good interview show and hopefully help some people out and bring shed light to some of the issues the city's having to as well as some of the great things that are going on and put a positive spin on it, which is something you don't really get from a lot of the news networks around town. Um, on, on Milwaukee, who we've partnered with, you know, I think they do a good job of covering, you know, the fun stuff and the, and the good stories, but a lot of, you know, the other networks, it's a lot of, it's, it sheds a negative image on the city for the most part. So we started, we started this show um, to kind of told the, tell those untold stories going on in Milwaukee, highlight, you know, inspiring people doing good things. And right now, I think we've had, you know, 50, or right around 50 episodes. I think in the 45, we've had oh, wow. okay. over 350,000 minutes listened to the show. And it's, it really took off. And we've got to highlight, you know, business people, entrepreneurs, musicians, athletes, politicians, just a wide range of people of all backgrounds or you know Sounds I'm, familiar. yeah <laughs> yeah what, what just so for the folks watching what is the website that they can go to see oh, ggmm.io and then you just click on the go getters that's our company website okay it's hosted hosted on there so that's been that's been a really good experience and i got to see what it did for my business and we you know built out a studio in our new office and relaunched the show a few months ago and now we're offering you know, podcasting and audio as a service to 
other companies and kind of moving our firm in the direction of being a leader in the, the audio and voice space, especially in this city. Well, why don't we pivot to that? Yes. Because I, I would like to hear more about that specific aspect of your business, how you think it benefits people, and what you've done to execute that. Uh, voice and audio, and how does it translate? Well, actually, yeah, how does it translate into business? But more importantly, the content I know nowadays, like you just mentioned, okay. um, I think people are looking for positive stories that they may not hear in other places. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think I think the whole, going back to the voice and audio end and why we're moving aggressively into that is, you know, podcast listenership has gone up around 20% year over year, wow. okay. which, which is solid. But you look at um, the Google Homes and the Alexas, right now these smart speakers are getting adopted faster than smartphones were in 2008. They went from a million to 20 million households alone last year. So I need one. They're nice. So that's that's rising up. And the way people are consuming content, um, people are consuming it's 13 hours and 40 minutes of audio a week. And it's just, we, we're, we want convenience. Whatever is you know, as convenient as possible, we're typically going to typically gonna go to, and you can't watch a video or read a blog while you're at the gym, while you're driving, while you're at work on your on yeah. your screen, you know, and then audio is intimate, you're in people's ears, you don't necessarily see it visually, but it's, it's just the ease of use, the convenience, and then you go back to the smart speakers, and yeah, we're addicted to convenience. We're also addicted to speed. So if I can just say, yeah, hey, Alexa, buy me toothpaste or hey, Alexa, I need a haircut. Can you book one? You know, it, yeah, that will save that'll save even uh, even going on your phone and doing Amazon one click. You know, that takes 30 seconds. Maybe you just say it into the speaker. It's going to take five or 10 seconds. And we care about that. You notice right now if your Wi-Fi is off and the load time is two seconds longer and you complain about that, we'll do anything to save a few seconds and these devices are saving us time. So content is really going that way and I think the companies who do that and get a first mover's advantage there are ultimately going to win and I think what your brand sounds like is going to be just as important as what it looks like you know, three, four, five years down the road. And if I can, let me ask an interesting follow-up question on that. Yeah, socially, culturally. Do you think because you said 13, over 13 hours we're listening, right? Do you think that's helping people listen? Or is it maybe at the same time also giving them a voice because they're learning? What do you think about that? That's just something that came to my mind. By I help, didn't know that stat. So by helping helping people listen, do you mean by giving them a voice to like a platform or well a platform, but also the more you you listen and learn, sometimes the better you can communicate. Right. Yeah, I mean I think I think the more people are exposed to to good content, the better the better off they're gonna be in that in that realm. There's a lot of good stuff out there. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of self-development content. There's a lot of entertaining content on podcast companies are going in yeah. different routes with them. I mean, GE released a podcast called The Message, which was, I think, about 22 episodes, two seasons. It got 4.5 million downloads. And you think of GE, they're a, a, a boring company. They created, they created a show of like, people using these futuristic GE products in a sci-fi environment and it just took off. So you got that, you know, Tinder released a podcast six months ago or so, which is pretty entertaining. Tinder? Tinder did. Okay. Trader Joe's. I haven't seen Trader Joe's released a five episode series kind of inside their culture and they have such a, you know, a good brand. So there's all this opportunity in the space and there's these brands with, you know, large built-in followings in it. 
I mean, they produce good content. They're pretty much at scale. Episode one, Nike's starting to do more of it. Nike's doing not only podcasting, but Spotify playlists for certain workouts and moving into audio that way. And it's just, there's a big opportunity. And I think, you know, everything evolves, right? Like social media, the companies that killed it on that in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, they got a huge advantage before everyone moved over there. I think it's the same thing with brands and audio right now, the ones that move there the soonest and do it well. You can't just move there and put out shit content. It needs to be really good. But the ones who do that, I think are going to have a a big advantage because ultimately marketing, you want to go where people are spending time and where you can engage them. And right now, a lot of people are spending time on audio. The other good thing is podcasts, um, people are consuming on average 80, 85, 90% of each episode. You think of how hard companies work to get you to watch an entire two minute Facebook video. Right. Like, yeah. The fact that I put out a 25 minute episode and I'm in someone's ear for 20 straight minutes, you can't do that on social anymore. No. So that's, that's why I'm very high on this. And I think companies that, you know, move there sooner and realize that will be successful if done right. Yeah. Honestly, I couldn't agree more. And I, really appreciate your vision of understanding what's forward instead of what's behind us. So yeah. um, two other topics before we get to the, uh, the three fun questions. Uh, co-working spaces. Yeah. You worked in one. Yeah. That's uh, part of where you began. Your mm-hmm. company. We're sitting in one. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, talking about thinking forward. Um, how do you think that may be successful and what do you think uh, we can do better? So I think co-working space in general, I think the the benefits are, you know, like we kind of touched on before we got on air, the programming, the programming yeah. in the networking aspect, that's, those are a lot of the benefits that co-working spaces can bring. For us as a small, nimble company, especially when we were starting off, we didn't want to, I mean, a one or two year lease scared the shit out of me. I I was was like, great, you know, co-working space, I can, I can come here and get my feet off the ground and meet people and collaborate and share ideas and get started that way without, you know, committing to a large office. And I think if you're a small company too, it helps to have the energy and the vibe of a, of a co-working space. I think if you you know, yeah. get to a certain level, then it can become distracting. But I think, you know, if you're a, a small business, a startup, the co-working spaces can be pretty beneficial, whether it's, you know, hear what you guys are doing or at the Hudson or Ward 4 downtown or something where a lot of people I know are, you know, they're kind of journalists who are not in the office a lot or are on the road. They're, yeah. yeah, that's true. They're people who, you know, their headquarters is out of, Madison, but they work, at, but they live in, you know, Brookfield or, yeah. and, you know, they, they want to be around people. They want to share those ideas and they like the vibe of a co-working space where it's more of an office than just going to a noisy coffee shop and setting up there and, you know, it's more business oriented. So, I mean, I think, I think co-working spaces are great for collaboration. I think they're great for small companies and I think it's a good programming opportunity they have. When we were at the Hudson, they had a lot of good events, and then they still do. And um, you know, I met a lot of people there when we were just starting out. That really helped us get off the ground. Yeah, I think the collaborative idea aspect is something that is relatively untapped. It's tapped a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, I think there's a lot more growth there. Um, so one more question, <clears throat> one I've asked other people who've been on this couch. Yeah. Um, so from a business aspect, you're a Milwaukee guy. Why Milwaukee? Um, so starting off, Milwaukee was a very, it was a very good place to start a business. I think if you're, I think it's, you know, I haven't lived in Chicago, New York. I've been to those cities. I feel like in Milwaukee, you can almost, you can maybe get ahead quicker. I was able to build a strong network. I think meet the right people, get access 
to the right people and people were very receptive as far as like a startup in Milwaukee. And Milwaukee gets bashed for its kind of startup or it gets ranked low, but I think there's a lot of momentum now you look at how much startup week's grown. We've been involved in that. It gets it was huge last year and now it's now it's startup Wisconsin all over the whole state. You look at the investments Aurora, Northwestern Mutual, these corporate companies are starting to make in the startup yeah. infrastructure. You look at all the great things Generator is doing. There's a lot of exciting things going on in Milwaukee right now. And then, you know, you look at all the stuff the Bucks ownership's doing and yeah. the new arena district. And I think Milwaukee is just becoming more and more of an attractive city. I've been here for exactly 10 years now. And, you know, I just, I feel like it's just growing and growing every year. And there's more exciting things going on. So they've gotten better ever since I moved here. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I think you're a part of what's been growing in Milwaukee, so that's awesome. All right, three fun questions. All right, throw them at me. You ready? I'm ready. First one may be easy. Who's your favorite athlete and why? Going to have to go with Giannis right now. Okay. I'm just a big Bucks fan. You're one of the few people not to say Aaron Rodgers. So, um, <laughs> but, but why Giannis? I mean, he's just, he's a very, he's a very down to earth guy. He's humble for how huge he is. He's funny. He, he puts out good stuff. He just, yeah, I, I like him a lot. I feel like he's just a great representation of the city. And have you met? I did meet him once. Um, I met him at the Bucks Chamber of Commerce luncheon, maybe okay. like five years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Four or five years. It was after, it might have been after his rookie year. He might have been a rookie. And um, I don't usually bother athletes or famous people when I see them because I don't want to be that guy, but I couldn't resist when I saw him. So Is he really like, as tall and long? Yeah. Is yeah. He and he was even tall? like, he was really lanky back then. I just went up to him and asked. I asked him for a picture, and then he was like, "Oh, can we take a selfie?" But I was like, "Absolutely." So he he, uh, held, yeah. he held the phone, and I, I, I had a selfie with him. He was very nice oh, to me. Cool. And so yeah, maybe that's why I, I like him so much too. Yeah, I like the way he handled the uh, what was it, Bel Air Cantina. Yeah, he's just a good guy. He seems he very well could have reacted differently. I like the way they handled it and the way that he handled it. And yeah. Yeah, and then, no need to have and then, then the other way, you just hear all the stories about how he's the hardest working player in the league. And I think his his background kind of, you know, growing up in poverty and selling selling stuff on the streets. And right. his interview with 60 Minutes was, you know, awesome hearing about some of that stuff. And that shed a lot of positive light on him and on the yeah. city as well. And, he just he just seems like a good guy who has a lot of perspective. And so I'm a, I'm a big fan of him. Yeah, I am too. Um, yeah, between him and Aaron Rodgers, it's a it's a tough one for favorite athlete. I do like Aaron. I I am not a fan of the Packers management group. I think they should have won out and got Khalil Mack, but we don't need to we don't need to go into that. They need to give Aaron I know, Rodgers we're gonna a chance see him, to win. We're gonna see him on Sunday now, right? We we are. Uh, I think, um, I mean, the stat about how the Packers, the only the only time the Packers won it, the only year they gave Rodgers the top 15 defense, they won the Super Bowl. It's like the the ownership cannot get him an above average defense, and that's all they need to do. Anyway, I, I could go on about that, but well, I am a fan of Aaron Go Rogers. free if you want. No. <laughs> that's, that's a topic I could talk about all day, and I agree with you. Yeah. They got to go all in. He's only got a few few years left, probably. Yeah, he's I mean, 35, 36. Well, thirties are young. I remember. I don't know. I've been, I've been taking <laughs> broken for five years. years. <laughs> Thirty. Um, I. Yeah, they they need to make a move at some point because I think they'll make keep making the playoffs, but. They, 
They just need to do something. We've been very spoiled. I don't remember any quarterbacks before Brett Favre. So the last, yeah, I don't they've had a, actually, I don't think they know what it's like to not have a top three to five quarterback in the NFL. And that's probably not going to be the reality once Rogers leaves. So they should probably go all in right now. Yeah. I watch, I, I get up super early. I watch pro football talk live yeah. with Mike Florio, who I know is not, Aaron Rodgers doesn't really like him, but they've talked about in 25 years, You've had Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. You only have two Super Bowls. Yeah. They should have more. They should have more. Pure and simple. And only three appearances. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> Second fun question. <laughs> Cannot go off on a tangent. Yeah, this I know. Um, so, since I know you're a golfer, yeah. you're, you're a good golfer, uh, what's the best golf shot you've ever hit? Oh, wow. Trying to think back. <laughs> <laughs> I've won a lot of playoffs in like high school golf, so those those putts that went in were always always good. I did I did drive the green in a, on like a um, three hundred and sixty or seventy yard hole, which was a nice like draw. It was it was downhill and okay. I had a little tailwind, but it still it's pretty majestic shot. Three hundred and sixty yard bar point. Yeah. What did you make on the hole? He was in a scramble. We missed the 20 foot putt. What you make, Bert? Yeah. All right. That's a really good question. I'd, I'd have to think of that. I've hit a lot of golf shots, and all my good ones were like in the 10 to 20 years ago range. So, <laughs> so they're yeah. not they're not fresh in my mind. Yeah, I asked. Uh, I had two pastors here this morning. Yeah, who both play golf, and I asked them the same question, which is. Those are interesting answers, so I'm glad I asked it. Uh, let me ask. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you two more, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, travel. If you had to go from New York to L.A. in an RV with three celebrities living, who would they be? Oh, that's a good question. I'd take Giannis with me, my favorite athlete. Okay. That would be a good one. Three celebrities living. That's a tough question. Because that's all the fun questions. I think, are always the I, think I, could, I think I could do a sports themed and take like maybe Giannis, Rogers, and Tiger Woods, or I wouldn't mind going business themed either. And yeah, take like that's a that's a good idea. I, I, like, I, like, I like Gary V. I, I, I you know, drink it. I'm, I'm a fan of him, and he's he's an influence. So if if I'm going business, I wouldn't mind. He may never shut up though. That would be a long ride. Maybe him from like yeah, Milwaukee, keep in mind, that's Milwaukee to Chicago. I'd take him. But some some of the you know top business people would be would be really good too. So so let me get. It's so crazy. Let me ask you the follow up question. So you're in Wichita, Kansas, and you stop to get gas. Of the four of the people who are there, who's pumping the gas? Four of the people who are no, probably so you, you and the other three. Yeah, that would be me. You. Okay. Um, if I'm riding with those guys, I'm pumping the gas. <laughs> <laughs> um, last one. Yeah. Um, do you have Netflix? Yeah. Okay. What are your two favorite shows right now? Um, the Office reruns. I think that's always okay. always my favorite show. That one's good. Um, new show. My girlfriend and I were watching um, this show called The Dark Tourist. It's pretty good. Okay. Is it Netflix owned? It might be. Okay. Might be. I also check that out. I uh, I went on a House of Cards binge like a year or two ago, and haven't we all? Yeah. I. So I, I try not to dive into the long series shows because that's just that one sucked up a decent amount of time looking back. <laughs> so I try not to watch too much Netflix. So yeah. The Office is good because it's like twenty minutes, and I don't need to keep watching it. That's true. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to watch The Have Office you seen for five hours? hours. I haven't. I've heard it's good though, so I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> if you do, just buckle up. It's, it is very good. <laughs> 
I've heard that. I've heard yeah. that. Um, well, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Any, anything else you want to add before we kind of wrap up? No, thanks for having me. And again, I appreciate you know what you did for us at the beginning when we were just starting out. And it's been good knowing you over the last five years and what, what you're doing for the community too. So, Yeah, absolutely. And um, thank you as well for everything you're doing business-wise and, and otherwise for Milwaukee. And uh, thanks for coming out to Brookfield today. So yeah, you bet. I appreciate it. Great seeing you. I appreciate it, sir. Yeah.